It is one of the largest food packaging suppliers on planet Earth. It produces 180 billion packages a year. That's about 25 packs for every man, woman and child in the world. Every second, 5,500 Tetra Pak cartons are consumed across the globe. And almost 500 million of these cartons are consumed every day. It is found in a jaw-dropping 170 countries across the globe. That makes it present in nearly every inhabited country in the world. Man, method, machine, material makes this a manufacturing giant that provides safe food to millions of people. We are supplying around 30 million packs daily out of this factory. And what makes these packs a modern day miracle? Innovative designs and machines that work with clockwork precision. Everything is monitored by machine itself. It's an intelligent machine. Milk, juices, purees, alcohol, you name it and you'll find it in a Tetra Pak carton. And its latest addition? A world-class super factory in Chakan near Pune in India. At Charkhan, about 30 kilometers from Pune, is one of Tetra Pak's largest factories in the world. Spread over 45 acres of land, this state-of-the-art factory produces the packaging material used for making Tetra Pak cartons. To cater to over 100 domestic and international clients, this factory rolls out nearly 750 kilometers of these revolutionary packaging rolls every day. That's almost the length of 10,000 aeroplanes placed back to back. India is one of Tetra Pak's fastest growing markets. To keep pace, the factory at Charkhan needs to function with clockwork precision to ensure that the deliveries are met on time. From the popular rectangular packs to the more compact pyramidal ones, from the funky wedge-shaped cartons to the latest one with the enhanced drinking experience of a bottle. Cartons of all shapes and sizes emerge from the fortified packaging material made at this super factory. And the man helming it all is managing director of Tetra Pak South Asia markets, Kandarp Singh. Tetra Pak invested in the, uh, the first Indian factory in 1997. Uh, the vision at that time was to bring its breakthrough aseptic technology into the Indian market uh, at a time when there was a transformation that was going on within the food industry in India. So it has been a, a fantastic journey in the last uh, 20 years particularly because we've seen uh, growth in demand and therefore we've had to add capacity uh, leading us to actually invest in a brand new facility uh, last year uh, to stay ahead of that curve. Even in a country like India, where traditionally everything is consumed fresh, lifestyles are rapidly changing. Growing urbanization, increasing buying power, the lack of time and the changing role of women means that packaged foods have become part and parcel of our daily lives. Today, Tetra Pak cartons are seen everywhere, in homes, coffee shops, restaurants, supermarkets, local grocery shops, and even in remote villages. We use them in our ordinary lives, but these cartons have an extraordinary quality, the ability to keep foods fresh for up to 12 months without refrigeration when unopened. Well, one of the biggest challenges we've faced, of course, is, is from how do we uh, build awareness amongst uh, consumers, for instance, on the fact that uh, because of the technology, you don't need preservatives. You know, uh, you can maintain long shelf life of a beverage product, be it milk or juice beverage, uh, without requiring refrigeration, and yet you do not need to add any preservatives to the product. The genius lies in the packaging material and in the processing, which keeps the product from spoiling and protects what's good. 
The carton consists of six layers, which acts as a fortress for the product packed inside. Layer one is made of polyethylene, or plastic, which guards against moisture. Layer two consists of paperboard, which gives it strength and stability. Layer three is again polyethylene, which acts as an adhesive for the next layer. The fourth layer is aluminium, which prevents the entry of light, air, harmful bacteria and odor. Layer five is another adhesive layer of polyethylene for the innermost layer. The sixth innermost is made of food grade polyethylene that seals in the flavors of the beverage inside. But how did this idea originate? For that, we need to go back in history to the early 1940s. Inspired by the need for prepackaged goods, Swedish entrepreneur Dr. Ruben Rousing had a burning ambition to find a practical, cost-effective alternative for packaging and distributing perishable foods, especially milk, which was largely sold loose and in glass bottles over the counter. One of Rousing's trusted colleagues, Eric Wallenberg, hit on the idea of applying the tetrahedron shape to a package. Rousing supported the brilliance of this idea and pursued it wholeheartedly to put it out into the world. He was also keen to find a way in which the milk inside could be protected from contact with air that would contaminate it. And how did Rousing crack this idea? The answer lay in his wife's kitchen. One day after lunch at home, I talked to my wife about the difficulties of these problems. She suddenly said, why don't you fill the milk above the next package continuously and then seal it off in the same way as we do when we make sausages at Christmas. I returned to my office after lunch and in the laboratory I had a cylinder made filled it with milk and sealed off a number of tetrahedrons with heat sealing jaws. What he had just discovered was a continuous filling method that would become the trademark of Tetra Pak. And soon, one of the greatest inventions in food technology, the aseptic packaging technology, was pioneered. It works on the principle that if a sterile cylindrical tube of paper is filled to the brim with a sterile liquid and then sealed immediately, it keeps the liquid from coming in contact with outside air. When the first aseptic filling machine was introduced in 1961, it marked a landmark achievement in food technology. Tetra Pak began manufacturing aseptic packaging material at its own factories and then sent it to its customers' factories. This was where the aseptic packaging material was fed into the filling machines that formed, filled and sealed the final packages with the product inside. As centers of production grew further away from places of consumption, Tetra Pak cartons began to address the need for packages to be transported over long distances and stored for several months without refrigeration. Soon, Tetra Pak took the world by storm. The tetrahedron was easy to stock. Its shape made it nearly impossible to lose balance. And when you poured out the liquid, it didn't touch the sides of the carton at all and made it drip proof. But with changing times, the design and functionality of the packs had to also evolve to keep up with the demands of the decades. Ruben Rousing could not possibly have imagined what would happen with the Tetra Pak packaging portfolio after he invented the Tetra Classic. Due to consumer and food producer demands for increasing functionality and differentiation, the portfolio has broadened in many different directions. Perhaps the most popular Tetra Pak carton of all time is the Tetra Brick package. So if we look at the evolution, one of the first major milestones after Tetra Classic was the Tetra Brick package. And when you combine this with aseptic technologies to get Tetra Brick aseptic, this still today represents absolutely one of the cheapest and most cost-effective ways to distribute and protect food. The Tetra Brick aseptic, what we call the brick shape package, you know, and that's really been the cornerstone of our success across the world and starting also in India. Um, because it gave 
some some very strong logistics advantages to our producers, you know, to the brand owners, the 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 manufacturers, you know, and and at the same time the convenience to the consumer as well. So that still remains to be the largest selling package in our portfolio today. Tetra Pak's hundreds of innovative designs get produced across the world at its 40 different factories. Charkhan is one of the largest Tetra Pak factories in the world and the responsibility of ensuring that this mammoth production runs smoothly lies with the factory director, Dilip Pave. We are supplying around 30 million packs daily out of this factory. And uh, you know, whatever we are producing, it's made to order. So our customers are waiting for these orders to come there. So imagine, every day from these rolls churned out, there can be a pack each for the total population of some cities like Mumbai and Bangalore put together. That's 30 million packs a day produced from this factory. It all begins with the raw materials, which are stocked in huge storage bays from where they get taken to the main factory to be transformed into the Tetra Pak rolls. Before the packaging material actually goes into production, it needs to pass a crucial stage in the design department. Not only does a lot of thought go into developing every product, but also in fine-tuning the designs. Tetra Pak's design department works to ensure that the correct design and branding appears on the packaging. With consumers becoming exceedingly concerned about reading the fine print on the carton covers, every piece of information to be printed becomes important. On an average, nearly 130 new and modified designs come to this department every month. For the design team, it's a tough job to juggle the requirements of the product and every day poses a new challenge. We have got this uh, printout which has come out just now and the design looks to be a little complicated. We have to print the coconut flesh which is white on the background which is white. So that is a little bit tricky part of that. This is a light source which is D50 light which represents basically the daylight and what we are going to check here is the true colors. So if you see here, this strip, it shows two different colors at this moment. But if we see it in the daylight, let's check whether it looks as one color. If it does, then it is the correct color. So it gives the true colors on the proof, and then we match it with the target, whether it is a close match, to show it to the customer for approval. This is just the beginning of the journey. Once the designs are approved, the rolls are ready to be printed and sent for the most crucial process into a high-speed laminator machine. Here, paper, polyethylene and aluminium come together to become the revolutionary packaging material that has changed the world. At the Charkin Tetra Pak Super Factory, there's not a minute to waste. Everything that has been designed and tried until now in the earlier stages is put to the test here. In the main production area, the individual layers are merged to form one gigantic roll. Tetra Pak cartons are made of six layers combining polyethylene, paper and aluminium, which shield against air and moisture that cause food and liquids to spoil. And it is in these machines that this armor is made. Every day, nearly 30 million packs have to be dispatched. So the machines, as well as the men and women who run them, need to work in synchronization. For the production manager, Uday Chauhan, it's a question of ensuring that all processes run without any hiccups. See, when we design a process, we do man-machine diagram. That uh, when there are five people working on printer, what exactly each individual will do at what stage of the process. So there is very clear definition around who is supposed to do what with clear identified roles and responsibility for the individuals. So that is something which is documented and been, uh, these people being trained on that. The first step in the printing process is done in the pre-press area. This is where the printing blocks are cut into shape and mounted on special rollers called sleeves. The design templates are processed a few days in advance of the printing. Yeah. 
most of the activities are automated, but there is a complicated process of mounting the polyethylene plates onto the sheets, which becomes an input for the printing process. This mounting is very critical and has to be very precisely done by the personnel because eventually it will determine the quality of the printing. While mounting, I need to be very precise because if suppose there is a misalignment of the eye marks, it can have a bad impression on print because two different colors are overlapping on each other on a printer. Once the sleeves are mounted with the plates, they are ready for the printing press. Now the order is ready to print. This is the main printing area. The printing machine, along with the laminator, is the beating heart of this super factory. We are producing first layer out of the six layers of aseptic packaging material. On laminator, we add another five layers. Uh, so on this one and that five makes it a complete six layers of aseptic packaging material. The packaging paper for billions of cartons all get made here. While the mounted sleeves are placed in sequence of color on the printer, the paperboard is fed into the machine here. These printers are highly automated and run at very high speeds. With seven different stations, the machine allows for different colors to be printed. The printer also indents the paperboard exactly where it needs to be folded into shape. You cannot create a difference in any two time of printing, maybe in a month, maybe in a year. The pack looks exactly the same. And that is the precision what we define. So your customer related information, customer design, all, and the visual aspect uh, of the package gets captured here. The functional aspect of the packaging material is ensured on the laminator. So this is how uh, it goes hand in hand. This part of the process is extremely important and a team watches the rolls printed with a hawk's eye. To help them is a method called stroboscopy, which helps to spot minute errors. What this stroboscope does, it flashes the light with the frequency which matches to the line speed. And now here you will see the image almost stationary. Though the paper is running with a speed of 600 meter per minute, you see it stationary. There is also a highly advanced system called Futec, which compares each image being printed to the master image. And if there is any difference, it sets off an alarm. To keep the systems running continuously and efficiently, the team is trained to spot any deviation from the norm. So when I start the machine, you can see that the brush has started rotating. This particular brush is not rotating, so we are trying to find out whether it is an obstruction. But uh, yeah, we need to open the assembly to understand. Every situation needs to be handed delicately and with a highly efficient team on its toes, it takes them only a few minutes to tackle any problem. The machine had stopped because there was some sort of a clog. As soon as we knew there was a problem, we went up, fixed it and uh, yeah, the machine is up. Once everything is given the green signal, the printed rolls are ready to be fortified in the laminator machine, where it will emerge in its new avatar of the six-layered Tetra Pak packaging material. If we take, for example, our core process, which is lamination, then there are some more than 100 parameters to be controlled every moment. At every second, we have to keep track of those many parameters. Only then we get the required quality, which is defined, which is, which is actually universal quality within Tetra Packs. 
the six layers made of polyethylene, paper and aluminium come together in the laminator machine. The paperboard that has been printed is fed into the lamination machine which will join it to the polyethylene and foil layers. At the same time, a roll of micro-thin aluminium is loaded and kept ready. The paperboard is flame-treated so that the polymer and aluminium stick to it. The aluminium layer is so fine that it is thinner than a strand of human hair. All the layers get squeezed together by rollers. This laminator machine runs at the speed of 650 meters per minute. For this process of converting or lamination process, 650 is the highest speed which is available across the world. The last stage is for the roll to get its final protective coating of polyethylene. Now with this, the laminated roll is now ready for the next process, which is finishing area. The paperboard rolls then need to be slit into smaller individual reels before they are sent to Tetra Pak's customers' plants. The rolls are fed into a machine called a slitter. Here, the printed and laminated packaging rolls are evenly cut into individual reels that are packed into a clean environment and eventually dispatched to the food manufacturer's facilities. Since the packaging material is in real form, it saves on space in storage as well as in transportation. These trucks travel hundreds of kilometers carrying the packaging rolls to some of Tetra Pak's biggest clients, one of them being Amul. The world is changing every minute, yet a technology that was founded over 60 years ago continues to serve our daily needs. Ever since Tetra Pak cartons were introduced to the world, the packs have constantly been reinvented. Today, the humble tetrahedron has a family in hundreds of shapes and sizes. I think the innovative spirit in Tetra Pak goes beyond just the products. I think it's in the DNA of the people. This includes our sales and marketing team, how they work with customers on developing new concepts and new business opportunities. The Indian market is a dynamic one, and consumers need to constantly be surprised with innovations. One of the first products that Tetra Pak launched in India in 1985 was the 200 milliliter mango flavored drink, Fruity. Back then, it was of course influenced from, uh, you know, the other parts of the world where uh, Tetra Pak was already so established. And um, having travelled as much, uh, you know, as we have, um, when we saw this, uh, we thought why not look at actually introducing this into the Indian market as well. Because other than glass bottles, you only had plastic pouches which weren't as convenient, weren't as hygienic at all. And uh, especially for this category that does cater, uh, you know, to a very large extent also to children. Um, you needed a pack format that was convenient, that was safe, that was easy to drink from and uh, also gave them the benefit of being able to take something and just sort of walk away uh, with it. 30 years later, Fruity has emerged in a new avatar. A one-of-its-kind 250 milliliter trendy carton known as the Tetra Brick Aseptic Edge. This carton, which made its world debut with Fruity, has the enhanced drinking experience of a bottle. 
there are a lot of benefits from a bottle which is the ability to recap to you know to sort of the whole attitude of drinking like that versus drinking through a straw and um, uh, you know this wasn't something that was done in India and so we jumped for it and said that you know we must and it's not by chance that every Tetra Pak carton has its own USP. There's a lot of thinking and R&D that goes behind the development of every package. For instance, the Tetra Prisma aseptic 330 milliliter with the dream cap. It has been designed in a way that the cap is bigger and placed in a way that it does not obstruct the nose when you are drinking and therefore you get a better drinking experience. Today, Tetra Pak has a large number of customers and is constantly experimenting with products unavailable in this packaged form in the market and therefore stretching the limits of possibilities. Tetra Pak has a beautiful uh, R&D center at Pune they keep on throwing more and more innovations at us, which they have an international experience of. They have also been developing certain innovations for us, which are very, very Indian in nature, which don't exist across the globe, like um, sugarcane juice or uh, masami juice. Juices is the largest market share that Tetra Pak has, and the fact that Tetra Pak cartons can be stocked up has led to unimaginable flavors and endless possibilities in juices. We were the pioneers in launching an ampanna, which is generally traditionally made at home. It's a salty and a sour and a sweet taste uh, uh, mango drink, a raw mango drink, which we have been able to package and consumers just lapped it up. India has been one of the growth engines for Tetra Pak globally, which is why there has been a lot of emphasis in terms of developing and launching new packages in the market. The Tetrafino Aseptic 100ml has been the first global launch in the Indian market in both the white milk and the mango drinks category. This has been customized even further for the Indian market by making it in the form of a chain pack which can be easily hung at the small corner shops in different parts of the country. India has a large population of lower socio-economic classes and to meet those consumers we have the Tetra Classic Aseptic which is commonly known as the Samosa Pack and the Tetra Fino Aseptic which is also known as the Pouch Pack to meet this segment of consumers. Modern consumers are enthusiastic about trying new products. So to keep step with growing demands, the super factory at Chakan has a department called the Product Development and Innovation Center. One of seven such centers in the world, this department assesses the need for new products in the market and tries to fill the gap. While a big part of our business comes from packaging, we often love to call ourselves as a company that goes beyond the package. The Product Development and Innovation Center works closely with our customers to develop new products, from concept up to the final execution. Simply speaking, what this means is taking small lab trials, which can be used for consumer testing, as well as for multiple iterations before going in for a full-scale commercial launch. So while clients often have their own research and development teams, Tetra Pak offers its product development and innovation center expertise as a value-added service. At the center, Tetra Pak's food technologists and process engineers work closely with customers to formulate new products for end consumers. They also facilitate market testing before the eventual launch. Consumer normally has three important actions. First, he drinks with the eyes, then he drinks with the, the aroma, and then he drinks with the taste and the mouthfeel. That's what exactly we do it. When we develop a product, we appeal to these three senses and create a product which is targeted to a consumer segment. And that is where the excellence of Product Development Innovation Center team lies to take the things ahead. The product visualizer room actually simulates various possible markets where the product can be placed in the form of mock setups. From a supermarket to a local grocery store to even a village stall cart which keeps cheap, fast-selling items. This is a great way to actually figure out not only how the package will look once it reaches the retailer, but also whether it cuts through the clutter. So a lot of important decisions get made in this room. 
However good a pack may look on the shelf, but to figure out how long it can actually stay without spoiling is a crucial step whenever any product or packaging is being explored. For this, the team actually produces a small batch of the product in the pilot production plant. The main aim? To test if the processing and filling parameters work well with the package and the product over the desired shelf life. The shelf life analysis room is where the packaged product is kept in incubators for up to nearly three to four months and a weekly vigilant check is done to evaluate its quality. It is placed at different temperatures, with one at four degrees Celsius as a reference and two more varying up to 45 degrees Celsius to reflect real market conditions. It's a wait and watch to see if the product makes it through the test of time and can be safely launched into the market. One of the biggest reasons that Tetra Pak cartons were such a rage when they were introduced was because they helped milk stay good and to be transported over long distances without spoiling. So it's not surprising that milk is the one product that has benefited the most from this aseptic packaging. Indians love their milk. They start their day with milk and often end their day with milk. And why not? Imagine this, India apparently has the largest number of cows in the world, over 280 million of them. Now, on an average, cows produce 90 glasses of milk daily. That's more than 200,000 glasses of milk each in a lifetime. Milk is also one of the cheapest here. At less than a dollar per litre, it's not surprising that Indians spent $1.6 trillion on milk alone in 2012. Much of the milk bought and consumed across the country is still traditionally bought loose and in pouches. This is changing slowly with Tetra Pak cartons becoming a more convenient option and milk companies looking to package their products in them because they provide a longer shelf life. Milk is a perishable food and spoils easily. It was Louis Pasteur who, in his experiments with beer way back in the 1800s, discovered that germs are responsible for spoiling food and causing diseases. He invented the method of pasteurization, which kills most of the harmful germs in perishable liquids like milk and gives them a shelf life of 5 to 15 days under refrigeration. But what can give milk an even longer shelf life without any preservatives is the amazing process of UHT or ultra high temperature. The entire process happens in a closed system where the milk is UHT treated by passing it through the inner pipes of this machine, while hot and cold water is passed through the outer pipes to indirectly heat and cool the milk without coming in contact with the water at any point. Through this, the milk is flash heated to between 135 to 140 degrees Celsius for three to four seconds, and then quickly cooled down to about 20 degrees Celsius. This flash heating kills the harmful bacteria and helps keep the milk safe for longer. This closed system also rules out any contamination or human contact. UHT or ultra high temperature treated milk is also known as shelf stable milk and it is this UHT process along with the aseptic packaging that makes this technology so exceptional and keeps the product safe with a longer shelf life. Once the milk undergoes the UHT process, it's ready to be filled into the packaging rolls that come in from the Tetra Pak Super Factory at Charkhan. The trucks carrying the packaging rolls from Charkhan have made their way to the Amul factory at Gandhinagar in Gujarat. Amul is not only one of Tetra Pak's biggest clients, it is also Asia's largest dairy brand. 
When Tetra Pak joined hands with Amul, it helped the excessive volume of milk that Amul received on a daily basis to be packaged and kept safely for a longer period of time without refrigeration. This became a phenomenally successful partnership and redefined the branded milk market. If you are to sell pasteurized milk, after packing, you have to keep it in the cold storage. Then you need to transport it to the various market insulated vans. And then at the selling point also, you have to keep it in the refrigeration. So a lot of energy and labor is required to maintain the cold chain. But if you have got USD Tetra Pak milk, you don't need all this cold chain. To cater to this large demand for branded milk in India as well as abroad, the milk that is packaged needs to be of very high quality. It all begins with the farms supplying milk to the Amul factory. Milk collection and distribution is becoming a state-of-the-art system today. Precise milking and collection of huge quantities of milk means that it needs to be stored and filled in hygienic conditions and at the right temperature so that it doesn't spoil. Many farms now have advanced milking machines that are fitted with automated vacuum milking pumps. Imported breed of cows like these usually have tags fitted with sensors that automatically sync with the machine to flash all the details of the cow, right from its serial number to how many times it has been milked in the day. This milk is directly stored in a temporary chamber at the farm before it is taken to the collection points from where it makes its way to the Amul plants. Once the trucks come into the Amul factory, the milk is put through a battery of quality checks for fat content, purity and temperature. This means that only the best quality milk goes through the UHT process. At the Amul plant, the enormous volume of milk coming in every day is handled by the high-tech filling machines into which the packaging rolls are fed. Packaging material meets the UHT milk in this, the Tetra Pak filling machine. These machines can pack the processed products into the Tetra Pak packaging material in various sized cartons, most popularly the 200 milliliter pack and the 1 liter carton. This is one of the fastest machines around. On an average, it can fill 24,000 portion packs in an hour. That's about 400 packs in a minute and 7 packs per second. That's how fast a human eye takes to blink. So these cartons are literally packed in the blink of an eye. This machine is producing 24,000 packages per hour. It cannot be 24,001 or 23,999. It will always be 24,000 exactly. This demo machine best exemplifies how the process works. The aseptic packaging material is folded into a cylindrical tube and sealed using a strip of polyethylene. The milk is filled into this tube and the level maintained at a constant. This process happens in a closed system. Before the tube is shaped into cartons, this is where the product is filled inside. The packaging tube moves to the next stage, where the gripper in the jaw grips the milk-filled tube at the appropriate place. The sealing bar seals the package in a straight line from one end to the other, and the cutter cuts the tube into individual cartons. Back in the 50s, the production line with moving parts had cogwheels and bicycle chains on which the wooden ceiling jaws were affixed. Today, the same principle has evolved into a highly advanced machine. To cater to different requirements, there are different models of the machine. But these are the latest one, A3 platform machines. This is state-of-art technology. Nothing is monitored by the operator. Everything is monitored by machine itself. It's an intelligent machine. The cartons now make their way to the final stage where the folder flaps of the packages are sealed by heating the outer plastic layer of the package. 
These packages are then lined up before being put into secondary cartons, which are then sealed and stored for distribution. Before these cartons actually head out into the world, they are tested for their quality. There are checks carried out on every batch to ensure that the integrity of the package is intact. Random selected packages are cut open and treated with dyes to ensure that they are completely sealed. UHT milk packages produced at Amul are kept under observation for five days, during which they incubate random batch samples. Only after these samples are cleared by quality control are the milk cartons released into the market. It is with the Tetra Pak UHT carton, it is not only you are going to the Indian markets where you could not reach with the pasteurized milk, it is offshore also outside Indian market also. Go to Hong Kong or you go to Dubai market or go to Doha market. We could reach to this market because of Tetra Pak USD. Otherwise, there was no other way to sell milk in this distance market. The popularity of Tetra Pak cartons is increasing by the day. And so is the effort to put them to good use after they are consumed. Usually the cartons are thrown away after use. To avoid this accumulation of waste material, Tetra Pak is actively involved in increasing the collection and proper disposal of these discarded packages so that they can be converted into innovative products instead. There is also a growing number of people who are passionate about going green with Tetra Pak. We came up with an innovative recycling idea where we partnered with Tetra Pak and retail space, Sarkari Bandar and Reliance Fresh to set up public collection points where consumers who are basically consuming Tetra Pak cartons in the form of milk and juice can easily come back and recycle their empty Tetra Pak cartons. Today, I think two out of every five packets we sell are coming back. Tetra Pak's efforts towards the environment extend to their state-of-the-art plant at Charkhan as well. Tetra Pak had the ambition to create a facility that saves more than it costs. In fact, this factory has been awarded the highest recognition for sustainable building design with the Platinum Certification by the Indian Green Building Council. This award is at par with the prestigious Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design certification awarded by the U.S. Green Building Council. Armed with the technology going for it, Tetra Pak is future ready. The focus is to make 10 billion packs annually, while it is equipped to double this capacity and take care of future demands. Well, the future as far as growth is concerned for Tetra Pak in India is very bright, uh, driven by the fact that we are witnessing a major transformation in the way food is consumed, but also in the way food is processed and packaged to bring it from the farm to the table. Given this, you know, uh, what I look at for the, when I look ahead for the next 10 to 20 years, I think that this is a technology whose time has come. Perhaps Tetra Pak's greatest mission still remains to make safe, nutritious food available everywhere.
from the poshest supermarkets to the smallest rural cart, Tetra Pak cartons dot the country and continue to be a part of our daily lives. While the super factory at Charkhan dutifully does its job in bringing them to us.